two hour discussion on on what uh, on, on the definition of what continuity at the point of a function means and with our last video we introduced this definition and we um, again a simple concept but we put some counter examples of where functions aren't contiguous and we use the definition to sh show us that yes indeed they are not um, now let's talk about perhaps some um, okay types of discontinuities again maybe get a little and one of the reasons why we introduced this again a kind of a simple intuitive con uh, concept that we put a mathematical discontinuities uh, that we put a mathematical definition on is all the all the theorems we use in calculus will always start off with assuming the function f is continuous on the interval a b that'll be the first conditional phrase of the theorem so we need to know what does it mean for a function to be continuous so anyway here's types of them the first one maybe we'd call an infinite computers having trouble keeping up with me and again in this case, maybe I draw one of my favorites here, the function 1 over x. And what that looks like, again, you should know these functions. Drawing them with a single color pen as a review. Now this is an infinite, and what we'd say here, there's a what? There's a vertical, I'd say right here, I got a vertical asymptote. used to spell asymptote with two S's. Luckily, my students uh, corrected that problem. Okay, there's an infinite discontinuity. Um, let me talk about second one, we maybe call a jump discontinuity. Now remember, I'm going to have to pick my pen up to draw this function 1 over x, and it's got a discontinuity. Here's a jump discontinuity, and if I gave you this function, could you draw it? Um, x over root x, all right? And this is going to look like what? I mean, maybe I better change pens here. Um, and this is really only defined when, you know, you don't have x equal to 0, but it's going to look like this. Okay, that's plus 1. That's minus 1. You'll see there's a jump discontinuity. There's something going on at x equal to 0, right? At x equal to 0, this is going from minus to minus as you come in from the left, negative 1 to positive 1. It's not defined at x equal to 0. Okay, 3. How about another example? Ooh, this is one we're going to talk a little bit more about. And I'd call this a removable discontinuity. Okay, here's a function, jump, this is I just call, let's, let's we're gonna talk a little bit more about this, a removable discontinuity. This. You're gonna follow me. A removable discontinuity meaning what? Well, the limit exists, but the, we call this a hole. It's kind of a funny concept. You just got like a pothole in the road. You got a hole in your function. At this point C, you know, the limit exists, right? The limit. Here's my problem. As the limit as x goes to C of f of x equals what? Equals L. But that is not equal to that's not equal to f at c. So what do I do? Well, if I could, it's your removable discontinuity, meaning the limit exists. The limit exists. But now I could plug this removable discontinuity with a hole. I'm going to talk, I'm going to do a problem like this next. Um, 
I plug it with a hole, I define an extension of the function, and I just fill that hole. All right, that's four. Four types. How about this one? Here's another. Some, you might run into this kind of function at one point. Um, how about something like this? f of x is equal to the sine of 1 over x. Yeah. That's going to be a tough function to graph. I want to know, where's, where's my point that's a little funky? At x equal to 0. What happens at x equal to 0 on this function? Is it continuous or not? Well, you could draw it. Um, you could also say, well, let's say, what is this limit? The limit is x goes to 0 of the sine of 1 over x. Um, could be written as the, the sine of the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over x. Oops. Uh, what's this equal to? Well, this in here, here's my problem. That limit doesn't exist. Correct? Remember what that function is? That function's coming in like this and this again. That's why it's kind of important. You see that function comes up a lot for you to know what it looks like. There's no limit doesn't exist because if I go from the right side or the left side, it's different. So this, li this limit, this is uh, not continuous. And we're going to call this a, an oscillating discontinuity. You don't run into these quite as often. Okay, you will see problems in your textbook act, asking you to find a uh, continuous extension function in order to fill a removable discontinuity. So here's an example here. Uh, I've got f of x, which is x plus 5, times x minus 1, divided by x plus 5. Now notice, I've made these two factors very clear that they're going to cancel for you. I've already done the factoring. So uh, in order to remove a discontinuity, the limit must at least exist. So does it? What is the limit as x approaches what? Well, what's my problem? What, where do you think I'm, having, I'm going to have a problem in this function? Well, I'm going to have a problem at x equal minus 5, right? That's my problem. I've got a 0 in the denominator. So what about this? As x goes to minus 5, here's my problem, of f of x, what's that going to be equal to? Well, remember, these are going to cancel. I'm going to put in minus 5, minus 1. That's going to be a minus 6. Okay, so the limit does exist, but what is the function? Is, is that equal to the function at minus 5? Well, the function at minus 5, that's equal to does not exist. So no, it's not. So if I drew this, notice a lot of the problems here, I've been using a bunch of graphical displays to represent functions. Here I gave you an algebraic function which might make a simple problem a little more difficult. But again, it's still a simple problem. Just look at it graphically then. Let, let, let's look at it graphically. Well, this is really the function x minus 1. We can draw that here. x minus 1 is going to have a slope of 1. Notice the quick sketch. I didn't label anything. Um, but here, I know at minus 5, I got my hole. And minus 5, and I know down here, what is that point there? That's minus 5, minus 6. Okay, so what would the problem ask? Well, find a continuous extension function. Well, here's what I do. i can I got to fill that hole, and let's do that. Again, that's somewhat of a funny concept, I think. I'm going to fill that hole right there. How do I do it? I'm going to create a new function, g of x. And guess what? The new function is going to be equal to the old function, x plus 5, x minus 1, 
over x plus 5 plus 5 when that is 1 x is not equal to what minus 5 what's it going to equal when x is equal to minus 5 well that's where you fill the hole 6 okay or I could write this another way I could just say okay it's equal to f of x when x is not equal to 5 it's equal to oh, that's wrong minus 6 minus 6 when x is equal to oh, negative 5 negative 5 okay and let me write down what they call this they're going to call this in a continuous extension oops continuous extension function notice for me to be to be able to create a continuous extension function the limit of the function must exist the li the limit must exist I cannot create an Ext continuous extension function for instance for a function like this I cannot create a con because the limit doesn't exist if I if I have a function like this I cannot there's the limit doesn't exist here I cannot create continuous e anyway uh, we're, we better stop now we're running a little long I'll get back to you soon bye bye